You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Happening right now, it has been about three hours since a fire started at a DeKalb County home, and right now crews have mostly been contained. Ariana Manis is live in Brookhaven. Ariana, fire spreading fast to a couple of houses there. The assistant fire chief, he tells us that thankfully uh, no one was home at where the fire started. Everyone was make, also able to make it out safely at the surrounding homes. Now take a look at this video right now. You do see smoke still coming from the homes um, as firefighters. They continue to work to manage hotspots inside of the houses. Now this is on Arbor Place off of Lenox Park Boulevard. The fire started at one home and spread to nearby homes in the assistant fire chief. He says that the homes are so close it's as if they are connected and that's how the flames were able to spread so quickly. Now the assistant fire chief, he tells us that they were alerted to this fire by the homeowner of where that fire started because they saw this all start on their ring camera. He was they were able to call 911. Now he tells us that the homeowners, they have made it here on the scene. He's been able to talk with them. Um, they tell us that they do plan to be out here much of the morning as they continue to manage the hotspots inside the home. As the story develops, we'll be sure to bring you any latest information that we receive. Back to you. In Cobb County right now, police are hoping to find one of the two victims shot in the parking lot of McEachern High School last week. They say the 20 year old is now a suspect and faces charges as they search for that suspect. Parents in the community are demanding better security at schools. During a town hall last night, they expressed their fear and anger. The shooting may have been the most recent incident, but we're told students with guns and violence at McEachern High is routine. When I send them off to school, I want to make sure they, they get home safely. What do you need to hear? I need to hear what's the action? What are we going to do to make these it safe for all of our kids out here? Leroy Hutchins, the school board member who organized the meeting, listened to parents and started a list of suggestions on how to make McEachern and other Cobb County schools safe. Hutchins is already planning another community meeting for next week. Hours from now, the life of state trooper Jimmy Sineskar will be honored as he is laid to rest. The 28-year-old died in the line of duty in a crash on I-85 in Gwinnett County. Authorities say it happened as Sineskar tried to get a speeding motorcycle driver off the interstate. That man was eventually caught in charge. Sineskar had previously worked as an Atlanta police officer before joining Georgia State Patrol. Law enforcement from all over the state will come together in Atlanta at Mount Perrin Church for that funeral service at 11 this morning. Time now is 649. New this morning, state Senate Republicans have voted to approve a bill that could make it harder for workers to join unions. Under the new bill, unions cannot get recognition from a company voluntarily with a majority of workers signing up. They would have to hold a formal secret ballot election. Union leaders and state Democrats say this violates federal law. Georgia's bill is modeled after a law passed in Tennessee. The state house also has unanimously passed a bill creating a commission on maternal and infant health. The bill's sponsor is state representative Lauren Daniel from Locust Grove. Last year, she had a baby boy a few months early and has been bringing him to the Capitol for work with her ever since. We'll be sure to keep you informed as the committee begins its work. And that was a look at your top headlines. Chesley, how are we looking going into the weekend? A little soggy, a little soggy, a little gray, especially gray, but uh, a little soggy as well. Our rain chances will be increasing as we head through the weekend. we got a slight chance out there today, and you see a few of that up here to the north, a few sprinkles uh, already. Temperatures are in the 40s thanks to the cloud cover that we have over the, uh, overnight. Uh, we started out in the 30s and 20s yesterday. Today we're starting off in the 40s, so it feels a little better out there even this morning. So not as chilly of a start, and it will mild up on us as we head through the afternoon. A light jacket, light jacket. I'm going to say a light jacket. Yeah, wear that. A sweater maybe, and an umbrella. You can carry it with you. It's only a 20% chance for the rain to be around, so for the most part you're just going to see the clouds. Temperatures will get up to 65 degrees, so if that's comfortable for you with that light jacket, I think it'll be A-OK. -okay. Drought monitor came out yesterday morning showing us better conditions. That yellow up there that you see is just abnormal dry uh, conditions. We got that in Rome and over toward Cardike. Where you see that tan area there, that's a moderate drought. We have just a few pockets of it. Barely in Dade, Walker County, and then over here in northern parts of Fanning County into Union Towns County as well, just stretching into towns. Uh, we do have that little uh, moderate drought there. Now with the rain that we're going to have around today and then through tomorrow, in fact through the weekend, should knock this right on out of the way. Most of your wet weather will stay mainly up here to the north. You can see where the showers are starting to become a little bit more intense over toward Tennessee. Uh, some of that will clip our northernmost counties. Isolated, 
isolated at best for Atlanta Metro and southward. We might not see anything at all. That front back off to the west of us trying to make its way in here. High pressure has been dominating our skies and now it's off to the east of us. So we're in the southerly flow that's helping to boost our temperatures up a bit, but also increasing our chances for that rain to be around. And you notice the stairs, how we gradually go up. We're talking about uh, scattered to numerous and widespread rain. You'll have the numerous and widespread rain around I'm thinking late on Sunday going into Monday will be our best chances for that heavy rain to be in place. Very low today, and then it starts to amplify a bit as we head through Saturday and into Sunday. Here's how it plays out. Forecast track model shows those little dots popping up as those isolated showers up to the north. That'll be the case off and on through the day today. By Saturday, we start you off with mostly cloudy skies, and that's the way it will stay in the metro area for much of early afternoon. I'm thinking late. That's when you start to see some of that heavy rain begin to move up to the north, and then that will make its way a little bit further down to the south. Uh, late on Saturday going into Sunday. Sunday features some heavy rain in the morning, catch a brief break, and then more of that heavy rain comes right back to us Sunday night going into Monday. In fact, our highest chances for rain Sunday and Monday, 80% chance on Monday. Temperatures stay mild or remain mild right on through the weekend and then cool off next week as we begin to clear things out. Crash, over to you. All right, Chesley, appreciate that, my friend. We are definitely looking at a fairly tepid rush hour as we take a couple of looks around. I-85 being one of them. Southbound, not a problem right there as you make your way from 316 out of Gwinnett County. Downtown, the connector northbound, southbound, just kind of zipping along. You see a little bit of red there. That's just because of that I-20 ramp, folks, making their way onto the connector northbound. And then, of course, the West Expressways. They're going to start filling in for your ride at Alithia Springs. And we've been watching the East Expressway all morning long, and that's pretty much the same thing. Down to a dull roar as folks make their way in from Lithonia. So we're looking good there, but however, we're keeping an eye. See these flashing lights? You just saw that fire truck heading down 285. We are hearing reports of a possible overturned tractor trailer 285 near Boulder Crest Road. We're going to do a little research. We'll have that for you by the end of the show. Aisha? All right, Christ, thank you. In honor of Morehouse graduate and civil rights activist, Dexter Scott King. The college is offering free prostate cancer screenings today. They will be performed by the Morehouse School of Medicine through a blood test. It is part of their prostate cancer precision prevention program. The results will be mailed in about two weeks. The screenings will be at the King Center from noon until 6 p.m. Dexter Scott King died after a battle with prostate cancer last month and tomorrow. He will be celebrated with the candlelight musical experience. That's going to be at the Ebenezer Baptist Church Horizon Sanctuary off Jackson Street at 6.30 p.m. That is open to the public and will also be streamed online. It is 6.54 now. This morning, former President Donald Trump is the projected winner of the Nevada caucus. Trump's Republican challenger Nikki Haley chose not to participate. The former president is expected to win most, if not all, of Nevada's 26 delegates. He needs over 1,200 delegates to win the Republican Party's nomination. This is his third win after the Iowa and New Hampshire primaries. Right now, state lawmakers are trying to pass a Squatters Reform Act. This relates to criminal trespassing on property. The bill would make it a misdemeanor if a person goes onto someone else's property for any unlawful reason or stays on that property without the owner's consent. It can sometimes take days for that person to be removed. It is Super Bowl weekend. The San Francisco 49ers looking for their sixth Lombardi trophy while the Kansas City Chiefs look to be back-to-back -back champs. NBC's Jay Gray has the best assignment. Okay, Jay, we'll be rocking right now. You looking good. <laughs> Yeah, you, should, you know, I mean, uh, when you're at the Super Bowl, you kind of got to play the role, right? And, and we're inside the NFL shop, actually, which is part of the Super Bowl experience. And you can find anything, either Super Bowl, football, or even halftime related. Super Bowl, yes. Usher, yes, the halftime star of the show, has his own line here at the Super Bowl. And take a look. Uh, this just one of the areas in what is more than 26 thousand square feet of everything football, everything Super Bowl. And, and we're talking about signing autographed uh, balls. Uh, you can find some of your favorite heroes pictures and, and see those autographs as well. But you want the gear? You can get that too. You need a shiny shirt to watch the game? Yeah, you could get a shiny shirt. And of course, you can also find hats, just really anything you would want to make your Super Bowl dream complete, including, as you talked about, a jacket to watch the game. Aisha, what can I bring you back? 
Uh, Usher memorabilia. Paraphrasing all things Usher, Jay. <laughs> it's the, uh, Chazzy, we're calling it, got it the Usher show at the Super Bowl. I got it. I got it. Jay can bring me back anything Eagles. We're looking at uh, by noon today, temperatures right around 59 degrees. We're going to hold on to those clouds. You may get a sliver of sunshine or two, but for the most part, just going to see that gray day. Not J gray, but Jay gray day. 65 degrees will be our afternoon high temperature. We'll drop back down to uh, 63 degrees again with cloudy skies by 6 o'clock tonight. That rain in, in, uh, will increase as we head through the upcoming weekend. Crash. All right, Chessie, appreciate that. Yeah, quiet rush hour suddenly interrupted with an overturned tractor trailer. It's on the other side of that fire truck there, right on the 285 eastbound ramp to Boulder Crest Road. You can see a lot of response here. This is definitely going to have an impact on the ride. I'll get you an update at 726. All right, so ending the show with that, we're going to definitely give you an update there to see what's going on. And yeah, that's pretty important as people navigate a pretty thick rush hour this morning. Yeah, and we'll keep watching that fire burning in Brookhaven as firefighters continue to help those homeowners who've been displaced. We'll keep following it for you on our 11 Live streaming app.